Welcome to another episode of the Audio Critics. And I brought a special guest. But before I introduce the special guest, I'm Phil the Punish Collins, and this is Mrs. Kruger. And I, if, if you can't tell by that name, we will be reviewing the original Nightmare on Elm Street. That's why I brought the specialist, because she's cooked out for him, she's cleaned after him. If you need to know anything about Freddy Krueger, this is the lady to talk to. Say hello to the to the audience. Hello, everyone. That's not what you expected Freddy's wife to sound like, did you? <laughs> Anyways, let's get into talking about this movie. When did you see this movie for the first time, if you can remember? Ha ha. Ha. I have no idea. It was so long ago. And I've seen it so many times. Were you a kid? Were you under 10? or? Oh yes, I was definitely a child. I was the same area around, you know, when I watched, you know, It and all that. I was probably seven, eight years old. Probably when I really wasn't supposed to be watching them. Scared the shit out of me. And now I love them. I love them. Was because with me, I didn't watch the first one first. I saw the third one first. Was it, was that the same way, or, or did you start with the first one? I definitely saw the first one first. Okay. Did you watch them in order, or did you watch them as soon as whenever you could get to see see one? Uh, it's like most movies. You see the first two or three in a row, and then you just kind of see them every which way, and then eventually you watch them all together. Yeah. Especially since we didn't grow up in that era where when they were coming out, yeah. you know, you couldn't go to the theater and see them in line like, you know, like the Saw movies nowadays where we grew up in that era and, you know, if you wanted to see a Saw movie, you could have Saw in order. Yeah, you know? but who kept it with Saw? I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. Only one I did see was the first one and the fourth one in theaters. I don't think I wasted money on any of those in theaters. I didn't do it. My, my dad did. My dad paid for Besides when I'm going to go see Jigsaw. But we ain't talking about that. But we're talking about this movie. Now, what, with you being a specialist of Nine Right on the Street, being Freddy's your guy, what draws you to him? Like, what, like, why is he, why is he lasted since 1984? He's original. He's, he, there isn't another one like him. Unlike, you know, Jason or Michael, you know, they, they were a child, but they had a horrible past, and then something brought them back, and now they're like an invincible being. Whereas Freddy, he's not really even a, a being anymore. He and he died as an adult, and he was a horrible person when he was alive. Yeah. And then he was, you know, he was killed, but then he's coming back to, to punish these people's children, and he gets them in their dreams. Who else comes and gets you in your dream? See, I think that that's what makes Freddy. It was like, yeah, all these people can do it in real life, but if you're not in that area, they can't get you. Exactly. But Freddy, like, if you're sleeping, because you've seen in the, in the other, other sequels that he go, he doesn't just stay on Elm Street. He goes yeah. past that. So no matter if you think you're safe from him, as soon as you fall asleep and you know about him, you're fucked. Yep, exactly. The, the moment you, you're told about him, he somehow sneaks into your life. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they do mention, like, are you afraid of the boogeyman? Do you believe in the boogeyman? But even then, the boogeyman is, doesn't get you in your sleep. He gets yeah. you while you're sleeping, but he usually comes in another form, like in yeah. your bed, in your closet. You know, it's, it's he's not the boogeyman. Yeah. You know, he's 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 the dream monster. That's true, the dream demon. Uh, yeah, he, but he's not a demon. He wasn't a demon until later on. Yeah. He's not a demon. Yeah, and this one, yeah, yeah, you're you're right. And it's, which we will be talking about the other ones later down the road. We're going to get them all in, in, in a line for you guys to, to watch later on. This going to be a little special thing that we're doing. And we're going to venture into other ones, too, just so you know. So keep not your eyes filled with that. We have the whole box. And which makes them when they're all together. Yes. That's my favorite piece. I'll keep it forever. <laughs> I love it. But... As much as we're talking about the good things, what what are some things about this one that you wish that they didn't do, or maybe I don't know. Is there anything in the movie that you feel could have been better? I yes. I mean, we we talked about this before, but with the the graphics, some of them are amazing and some of them are not so great. 
great. Yeah. Especially like towards the end of the movie, they really started to kind of, I guess, slack off. Is the better word? Or kind of ran out of budget. We don't know what yeah. part of this was. Yeah, because I mean, like the 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 whole giant death scene when he gets sucked in his bed and the blood. That's awesome. The whole even with Tina in the body bag and she's being an image. And the, the, the bug comes out of her mouth, the, the centipede comes out of her mouth, and then she's got like there's snakes or something around yeah. her feet, but it looks gruesome and it's just, it's very, very yeah. good. And yeah, the then, visuals are. Yeah, but then at the end when the mom just, you know, Freddie jumps on him and he's burning and then they just kind of get stuck. It's just that. Uh, yeah. Uh, they could have done a lot better on that. And speaking of the mom, obviously, the mom with, when she's pulled through the door at the end. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, you, know, you can definitely tell that. I, and I understand it's a. Uh, a time for for it, yeah. you know. They didn't have CGI, but at the same time, I think they CGI did. Like nowadays, like the 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 remake, when at the end when Freddy stabs his mom in the back of the head, yeah, with the mirror, and you and you see that it's so CGI that that it takes you out. So I don't think that there's a really a win in, in that scene. So unless you have a bigger hole, yeah, there's no winning because at least you can put something on a wire and. Well, and you know, at the ending too, when he rips her through the window, it's like, if somebody had done that, it would have taken a lot longer, she would have fought a lot harder, and it would have been a lot more, like, bloody, because, I mean, he just broke through the glass, mm-hmm. and, I mean, he's tearing her through this little small hole. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And, it's, it, and the way that the body turns, like, it literally, like, it grabs her, it's okay, and then, like, it twists the body completely straight through the door in, like, three turns. Yeah. It was just, it was, yeah, that was pretty bad. That was, that was. But I do like the ending, like the, the part of the ending where like they get the car and also that rooftop comes up and it's Freddy's colors of his sweater, you know, the windows to go up now. I feel like there could have been something else, or, like something kind of like, almost goofy, like do like the, a face on the front of the car or something, or like you I know, mean, when they, she's into the phone. I'll, I'll just her, say that. Yeah, do something like that. that like that was kind of like, goofy. That was yeah. like that was bad, but at the same time it was good. It added something to it. Like that was gross. Like or, I didn't or have, that. Or have it like, where like when that happens. Have Freddy's glove come out of the um, steering wheel. Yeah, and then start driving the car itself. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah that that could have been. Or he could yeah. even like appear in the car with them somehow or something like. That. And yeah. now there were four people in the car, so like yeah, all of a sudden he appeared like the middle of between Rob and, and Tina in the back yeah. or something. I don't know, but at the same time that was good. And, you know, of course the jump rope scene that's always in there. You know, yeah. The song, of course, the classic song. Yeah. I love that song. You should learn to jump. That's how much. Fan, she is. But it's hard to hear in public, and when you do hear it, 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 it creeps people out. My best friend all the time, I'd be at her house, and my ringtone would go off, and she'd be like, "You have the creepiest <laughs> stuff." <laughs> um, but it's, to, to each their own. To each their own. Mm-hmm. Um, me personally, like we talked about it. And yeah, you told me about maybe it's the she's drunk, but I think it's just like when they wrote the dialogue. Like, honestly, it's for the parents. Maybe that, that's just, like, the parents' general, because Johnny Depp's parents were kind of like the same way. Like, when uh, Head of Landon Camp's character calls, what's, um, what's her name? Uh, Nancy? Yeah. Calls, and she's trying to get the giant, uh, talk to Johnny Depp's character, and the mom's like, it's her again. <laughs> you know, and then the father grabs and goes, He's asleep. You have to talk to him tomorrow. Yeah. And he hangs up and he goes, off. you got to be firm with him. Yeah. You know, like, so I think it's just like the parents' dialogue. And maybe it's just, that's a, what that's what they're trying to go for. Like, the parents are so stupid that you can't go to them. You can't, you know, they're not listening to the person saying, like, there's someone try to kill us and all that. They think that it's just one person. But then when that person dies, now I think it, what they should have had, maybe one extra body count. Like, somebody that they didn't know. Yeah. was part of them because like once that guy hung himself first of all if i was a cop i would know that that guy didn't hang himself because how high the rope was yeah and the bars were right there you can't you know and uh, i'm sorry to cut you off on that scene but also it's like right before they walked in the cell rob closed his eyes almost immediately he closed his eyes like oh, okay i'm dead now and then they walk in they didn't even try to resuscitate him yeah they didn't try like, they literally like dead. oh he's dead and i'm like yeah you didn't even like that's okay all right okay he wasn't even blue and now uh, when he did turn his face finally and he turned his head when he's laying on the ground like he looked paler and you saw the rope yeah. thing but at the same time he didn't he wasn't blue yet i mean it just happened it literally just happened mm-hmm. i don't know that was a little silly to me uh, but and then the only the only thing that i have the, the only little piece that i don't like is everybody always had a dream before they died yeah but as far as we know giant ducks 
character never actually dreamed about it. Mm -hmm. So, why did he get taken just because of Nancy? Well, I mean, he did go, like, I'm your boyfriend now, so... Yeah, but it's just, I don't know, uh, he, he never actually dreamed about this. He thought it was, everyone was crazy, so... Yeah, because he was like, how'd you sleep last night? And he goes, I slept like a baby or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that is true. Uh, so, that makes you wonder what, like, did he, now this is just going out there and thinking about random things, but one is he is originally from there. Because, you know, the family killed Freddy and all that. Yeah, thing. that's what I like, think. Like, about. maybe his family wasn't from there, and that's why he didn't know about him and all that, because, you know, when he said Freddy and all that, not like she knew about him. But her mom had a story, you would think that when she told him, and you would think that he would have went home. Like in the, in the remake, when the Quinn found out that who Freddy was, he went to his dad and goes, you killed Freddy and all that, and his dad knew about it. But it's like, did these people's parents know about it? Because you would think that, you know, when they, when they saw that the bars were on the people's house, they were like, oh, she's just going crazy and all that. They act like, you know, they had no idea why. Well, and they didn't show a whole lot of people. They didn't yeah. talk about what families, that when the mom, you know, took it downstairs in the basement and was showing the blood, she was like, me and some parents, you know. We, yeah. we got together and found him when they let him go. And then, you know, he was staying in an old boiler room and we set it on fire and let it watch it burn. Yeah. But she didn't say who. She didn't yeah. list any names and they didn't show any anybody else really except the, that small group of kids. They, they kept it very small. Speaking of, I wonder if, Okay, you know how Tina had her mom and her stepdad. I wonder what if killing Freddie caused Tina's parents to divorce. We don't know because you never know, hear about her dad, like if he died or whatnot. And I'm wondering, like, okay, my question is always, why did they start with Nancy's parents being separated? Yeah. I just that that was never answered. They never talked about it. it was just you know, Nancy's father is very hateful. I mean, they just yeah. He's always snotty about, oh, why is this? She where is she doing this? Da da da. You know, and then that one comeback that she had, I'm gonna give her some actual help. Yeah. And that was, See, that's one of the lines that I, uh, I actually hate deliver. You know, when I said talk about dialogue. Was badly delivered. Yeah. 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 I got a better idea. I can go get her some help. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. But did you know that that actor who played her dad wanted to come up with an idea of doing the prequel to Nine on Elm Street, like how like how they tracked him down and all that. That was an idea that they had, but instead they went with Dream Warriors, the third one. Mm -hmm. And when we get to the other ones, we'll talk more in depth about my ideas about that. <laughs> because I got some, the sequels, whoo! That's a different story. But this one though, 1984, it's over, 30 years old. And it still was a classic, and it's never gonna be, and even the, I mean, the, the remakes, I, it, that's something else to talk about, but I don't want to compare it right now, but it's, they're, they're very different in, in a lot of aspects, and I'm never gonna trade the classic for the new one. Yeah. I mean, everything has its pros and cons, but this is definitely, I'm a, I'm a classics, you know, I, yeah. I'm not a big remix fan at all. At all. There's only a couple of remakes that I, I can tolerate. Now, I do every once in a while watch the remake, but, okay, I didn't care for, like, the phrase look for the remake, and not, not doing really comparison, but I love Jackie or Haley, the guy who played Freddy. I think he did a decent job of portraying who Freddy was. I just don't think that they gave him the best stuff to work with to... I mean, he's never going to be better than Robert England. I mean, Robert England, I mean, we think of Freddie. But as far as what he did, I think it was a decent job for what he did. Like, one scene, the only scene I'm going to talk about is a fucked up scene. But when uh, Tina was outside and the, uh, the dog was barking and the dog's dead, you know, and then he was like, I was just patting it. And then, you know, this, this is like how, how he did that. I'm like, Okay, you know, like, he, he's doing all right, but not, like I said, not, you know, better or anything. But that's one, I do want to meet Robert Greenland just because of, of this movie. I like, 
I'm sure he's tired of people asking him about it and all that, but it's like, it's such a classic movie. Like, you could, you could watch it at any time. It's not just like a, during the Halloween type of thing. You can watch it in January. You can, you know, watch it in fucking July. You can watch it Fourth of July and, and like, I mean, it's an everyday class. Yeah. Anytime you want, especially when you're. Okay. And, and as long as long as you got the gloves, that's the thing. That's people don't even have to have seen. No, I'm not sure. You see the gloves and you know who it is. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, like, you don't have even, to. even even the the shirt. Now the hat, people can be like, oh, that's Indiana Jones. Yeah. Mm, yeah. But the the sweater and the hands, you already know who it is, and you know it's just like Jason's hockey mask. See the hockey mask, even if it is a hockey player's hockey mask, you automatically you're like you Jason. It, yeah. yeah. Especially when it's like if you're setting something. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Even those generic ones that don't why are you looking at you like, oh that's what about Jason. You know, yeah, like, exactly. You know who it is. There, there's a movie that reminds me of that, it's called Bloody Murder. Yeah. And they had like but it was like more like formed, you know, not like all out kind of a hockey mask, but it was more formed to the face. More like look like street hockey kind of mask. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. And that's the thing, I don't, but the difference is, like you said, like, you, like, that's a rip-off. You know, you never seen, like, a rip-off from Nightmare on Elm Street, but, like, you never seen... You can't. I yeah. mean, how, how do you, how do you rip that off? I mean, aside from, like, the closest thing that I can compare it to, and it's not, it's, it's action, it's, it's Wolverine, you know? I mean... Well, not just that, but, like... How about somebody killing your dreams? Oh, know. yeah, of course. Nobody, yeah, no. Because like, as soon as no. somebody does that, you're like, that's a rip off Diamond Elm Street. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's what, make, you know, because you can have the rip offs of Friday the Teams and Halloweens and all that, and you're like, yeah, that's kind of like a rip off of that. But as soon as you say Diamond Elm Street, or you just try to do something on Diamond Elm Street, I feel like you go into um, sewer territory because. Well, of course. I mean, the trademark everything. Yeah, you know, be, be, because you can't. Head. You know, you can't kill somebody in their dreams. Like, the only way that I can see that happening is if you're never awake. Kind of like, kind of like you know, like the Matrix. Yeah. Where, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. They're, like yeah. that's, that's, that's different, though. That's, that's exactly, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the closest I can see somebody going. Because, I mean, in the Matrix, technically, you're already asleep. Yeah. And you're, you're waking up to... The real reality, yeah. like that's that's completely different. Exactly. That's, that's, yeah, but that, that's no. what I'm saying. That's the closest thing that I can think of that you could do without ripping off. If you're fully asleep the whole time and you never wake up, like that's just like your life. Like you're in a coma, maybe, and that's how you're living your life. Kind of like Monkey Bone. I don't know if you ever seen that movie. No, we keep talking about it. Yeah. Watch it. But that's what it, you know, something like that where somebody's fully asleep. Because as soon as like if somebody wakes up and then they go to sleep and they can get killed, it, it, no, it, it usually when you see someone when it comes to like sleeping or dreams or like something of the sort, it's not that it's not like someone's coming to kill them. It's usually they're trying to find their way or they're having a, a trip of some sort. Yeah, they're, exactly. You know, like spiritual guidance or something or yep. a, 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 a religious awakening. You know, yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's nothing all to do. Yeah. yeah. No. That's what I'm saying though, that's why Nightmare on Elm I feel like it's so iconic because it can't be ripped off because if you try to, everybody's automatically going to compare it. You know, you can have a good slasher movie and you can take parts from different movies and all that and you don't really think too much about that, but as soon as you do that, you're like, Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. I've seen this one before, exactly. I know how it happens, you know. Well, you at least know the well, you know you know the gist of it. If you've never seen it, you just yeah, exactly. I mean, now let's give our review about this. Out of ten, what what would you give it? That's, that's a silly question to me, though. This movie, this is a, my favorite movie. Like, um, this is my favorite movie. I don't give anything perfect scores, so I'm gonna say it's a nine. A nine. It's just it's it's got good and bad. Yeah. But what movie do you find that's ever perfect? Exactly. I mean, and it's 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 got both the cheesy where you get a chuckle out of it to where it's it gives you a suspense, it gives you a jump. Like like we were talked about earlier, compared to the new one, especially the reason why I like this one so much is it's suspenseful. You never yeah. actually yeah. truly say his face. 
he's always in the shadows, or you just only see his body, or you only see the sh his, his figure in the shadows. You see him quickly move by. They never actually show him, unless he was on fire, and even then you didn't see an actual glimpse. And he was, you know, you could tell it was a different body suit because he's on fire, and he's a lot yeah. madder. But yeah. and it's just, and then that's, that's a funny part, you know. It's yeah. like, oh, he's on fire, and ah, he's kind of bad, you know. <laughs> like, you could tell he's different, but... Just, and plus, you have to think, also, you could think of it this way. He's on fire, his body's swelling because of that, because he's already been yeah. burned, too. And when he slashes himself in that one part, too, and the maggots are showing and whatnot, like, all that life in him is burning and moving around. And I mean, that could be also why he's swollen. Of course, you know, it's, it's not. But, you know, there's different ways you can look at things, and you can make it not so cheesy. Yeah. Like this, that, the other. I mean, there's some parts, like, you know. Like, the, the, I do got to wonder, like, when he cut himself. Yeah. How come... His whole body was burned. Like it was like a normal. I mean, you don't necessarily have to be entirely burned. I mean, I mean, yeah. You can die from. You can get severe. You can get kind of minor burns, but die from asphyxiation. But who went in there and put out the fire? Like, who's going to stop the the murder? No, what if he had a hidey hole somewhere or something? You know, like if he like there's one spot because then he was in a boiler room. So I mean, what is in a boiler room that can that will burn yeah. forever? You know. Eventually, it's going to stop, and if he's in one spot where he's not completely burnt, you know, the fire didn't reach him, he didn't get, you know, maybe he's laid on the floor, and part of him got burnt, but he died from all the inhalation of that smoke and stuff. You know, there's different ways to speak, you know. You know. All the reason I bring that up is because, not, now that we're going to get into it right now, the sequels, his whole body was burnt. That's the only reason why I'm like, you know, I mean. It Lack is of a, detail. Yeah, but it could be his imagination. At that time, he didn't want to show his burnt body. We, if you want to, like you were saying, you make it not as And he cheap. can make himself look like anything. Remember the girl in the hallway? Yeah. Where's your hall pass? Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. So you give it a nine. I'm going to give it close to that. All the reason I'm going to give it a little bit lower is because of the mom and her, or the parent, all the parents' dialogue. It's like, it just took, took me out of like, it was just like they were just standing in the liver of mine and then. You know. Oh, and you know what I also think of? Okay, you, you think of childhood cartoons. You know how yeah. parents are always like super cheesy or you don't see their faces because they're kind of trying not to bring the attention to them. Yeah. That's what I also kind of try to think of it as. Like, the parents but, are really cheesy. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll use this line. Nancy talked to her dad. Dad, get here and knock down the door in 20 minutes. First of all, that's also another thing I got a problem with. <laughs> how, how long? She said 20 minutes. And he said there's traps and the this yeah, exactly. and that. And yes, I know. Yeah. I know. But, <laughs> no. uh, but the dad was like, who, baby? Who do I get? I'll go get him. I was like, what the? Yeah, but you know what? You have to think. Some dads do talk to their kids that way. Yeah. Especially daughters. Like, I understand. Uh, I know your dad. <laughs> he doesn't talk like that. But, and, but just, does he talk to your sisters differently than you? No. Okay, well then some, but some dads, if they don't have sons at all, you know, some yeah. dads, they do, like, I don't feel like my dad talks to me like that anymore, but I feel like as, when I was younger, my dad kind of talked to me like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you just talk sweeter and kinder and you coddle your daughters, like, it's, I blame you, Dad, for now making me like this movie as much. I'm giving it an 8.75. Just a point two five lower than you. I mean, it's to each their own. You have your own opinion. If yeah. it's less, it's less. It's, you know, I just, perfect score is I yeah. spoken of to me. I mean, you could have given it a 9.75. Well, I don't do points. I just do 1 through 10. I do whole numbers. So I do points because, you know, it could be a really good movie. But and a little bit above average, but maybe it's not a seven to me, but it's not a six. Okay, okay. Well, we'll come back to that. Yeah. Anyways, do stay tuned for our Number and Old Street review series, and you could get surprised about our next one. And once we get closer to the end of this series, we'll talk about more about that because we wouldn't want to get ahead of ourselves and all that. We gotta make sure our schedules line up and all that. Oh, uh, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. But. I've been Phil the Punisher Collins. This is Mrs. Kruger. And like I always say, do you have a line you want to, or you want to plug anything? Or, you know? No, no. Okay. I don't need to plug anything. Okay. Right now. That's okay. Yeah. I'm Later not a very on. sociable person. I just like plants. <laughs> What's a surprise right there? You know, you got the you got the man with the hedge clipper fingers that he can. I know. 